when we think in Cartesian terms, right? I can't say this kind of stuff. I, I'm forgetting about the fact that the parameter exists, right? Or, yeah, if I've got a parabola, I'm just going to call it x1, y1, okay? That's the name of some point of the parabola. When you're working in the textbook or in the exam question, and there are no these, these are your sort of think Cartesian. If there's no parameters, you're thinking Cartesian. Alternatively, I know x1, y1. Remember, I don't have to just say x1, y1. I could, if it's convenient to me, say x1, what's y1 going to be equal to? It's going to be x1 squared on 4a, if I were to make y the subject. Do you see that? x1 squared on 4a. A, okay. So, so both of these are true, right? I can view them as just two different numbers, or I can view them as linked together because they are, right? On the basis of this, we came up yesterday with an equation for the tangent at x1, y1. Does anyone remember what it is? It starts with the next. Yeah, good. X x1 equals two a. Y plus Y1. Very good. Okay. Now, don't feel too bad if you're not memorizing these. We've only just met them, and there are so very many. Okay. As with most things, you'll become more familiar with them as you use them. Okay. Which is what we'll do later today and on Friday as well. Uh, now, yesterday, I did not devote any time to developing the result for the normal. Okay. Uh, and that's for two reasons. Number one, it's super easy to get the equation of the normal. You can work out the gradient just like we did before and then you pop it into point gradient form, okay? That's the first reason, it's easy to get. The second reason is, let me write it for you. Uh, here we go. There you go, there's the equation of the normal. Now, having taught maths for a while now, right, I have developed all these little tips and tricks for memorizing Things that are very, very hard to memorize. In all my years, I have never come up with something that makes this nice and elegant to memorize. There is no form of it that is nice and like, oh, this is really like nicely factorized and all that kind of thing. Remember, we did a bit of a trick here um, to simplify this one. We got rid of the x1 squared in this line, so it looks quite nice. With this guy, you just can't do it, right? You can put it in other forms, but the other forms you get tend to confuse you with the other equations that you really want to memorize in those particular forms. So I don't think it's worth putting any effort on this guy. I'm really kind of just putting him there for the sake of completeness because you have the tangent and normal for parametric representation. So now you have the tangent and normal for a Cartesian one. It's not that hard though because it's literally the same thing on both sides. There's just a one on the x. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. In a way of speaking, I find that, and, and personally, I'm just speaking from my own experience from being in year 11, 12, learning this, um, what you just said is exactly the kind of thing that is very easy to confuse, right? It's like, oh, I just put the one on the wrong side, and then you have a completely different equation. Minor, minor details change it dramatically. So um, if it's easy for you to memorize, then a thumbs up to you. But I think most people will find that is not the case, okay? So... We have one last result to um, work on, okay? Now, when you have a look at this list, which do you think it would be? What do you think is missing from the list? It looks like the e equation, the Cartesian equation for a chord. I've got tangent normal chord, and I've got tangent normal, okay? That is true, kind of, okay? We're going to look at a very special chord, and I'm going to explain it to you by way of this diagram. So you need a nice big parabola drawn on here, and... Um, we're going to, I'm going to tell you about a very special chord that has to do with some of the results we already have here, okay? So I'll wait for you to draw your parabola. Most of you are most of the way there. It's okay, you can finish it as I'm speaking. Here's what we're going to do. Um, we've got so far all of this language, right? I need to add a teeny, teeny little bit more. See how I point on the parabola? We're just naming it for the sake of convenience, x1, y1, okay? For what I'm about to do, I want a point that's not on the parabola. Specifically, I want a point that's outside the parabola. So for example, if we all draw a point maybe down here in the third quadrant, just so we're all looking at something consistent, something like that, okay? Say it again. That's a fourth quadrant. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Clearly you're away. What an amateur error, right? One, two, three, four, okay. Now, I'm going to call this point P, right? P for point. And 
distinguish it with a point on the prime. It's outside, right? I'm going to call this naught y naught. That's a very arbitrary distinction. I call, could have called it anything I like, okay? But you'll find most textbooks do this, and so at least we'll be talking in the same language, okay? Now, from any point outside the parabola, grab your ruler. Um, I think that from any point outside the parabola, I can always draw a pair of tangents to the parabola. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it's just like a circle, That's exactly, which is why a lot of the language is we use circles. Okay? So what I'd like you to do now is get your ruler out and carefully draw in the pair of tangents that go from our external point up to our parabola. Okay? Do it as carefully as you can. So you can see here, right, I've drawn my pair of tangents. This gives me a pair of points, new points, right? So I'm going to call this point over here A and this point over here B. They are points on the parabola, right? So I'm going to name them in this scheme, right? I'm going to call A x1, y1. It's on the parabola. And B is the next one I want, so I'm going to call it x2, y2. Okay, so x0, y0 is off the parabola. A and B, x1, y1, x2, y2, they're on the parabola. Okay, so now that we have got those two points, right, these are the points of contact between the tangents from this point. And there's two tangents, so there are two points of contact. The two points of contact make a chord. Right? That chord in there, and I'm putting it in a, a nice different color. That chord there, this Chord, just a chord, or the lattice rectum is a special chord. Because it's the chord drawn between these two points of contact, I call it the chord contact. Chord of contact. Okay, this is a special chord. It's a chord of contact because it's the two. Okay, I'll say that again. It's called the chord of contact because. It joins the points of contact from there. Okay? So in some senses, I could draw that chord without knowing where the tangents are because this point is really what tells me where the, where the tangents are. It's really hard to visualize what on earth is going on. Okay? So the chord of contact. This is this last um, Cartesian equation we're going to derive. Okay? The proof's a bit weird. I'm going to show you the proof. Um, it's hard to follow. When I learnt it, I found it very difficult to follow. Um, every time I've taught it, students have found it difficult to follow. It's not difficult to follow because it's long and complicated. In fact, it's one of the very shortest proofs that I know. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five lines. Not long, okay? What's problematic about it is that it goes by so quickly. It's like, what just happened? Like, you'll look at it, you'll look at my lines, I could give you my five lines, and you'll look at it and not know what's going on. So what I want to do is I want to give you kind of like a a bit of a pretext to what's going on, a prologue if you like. Right? A prologue is what you get before a story, so the story makes sense. Okay? It's like chapter zero if you like. Okay? So what I'm going to do won't seem immediately relevant, okay? but I want this category in your head so that when I get to the proof, I hope it will make things click. That's my goal. Okay? 